Uh, we will now continue with the uh, second uh, question and answer session, and our first question is uh, coming from Mexico. Go ahead, please. We're calling from the University of Cuauhtitlan, and our question is, what would be the actions of uh, universities to take in order to be able to face and train its students with these global uh, competencies? Thank you. Well, uh, students today need access to global information. No nation or, or culture has a monopoly on information. So uh, foreign exchange programs, internationalization, uh, allowing students to uh, download uh, Internet uh, uh, journal articles and such from other nations is imperative in, in the global process. Secondly, equipping students with the, the latest technology so that they can communicate with one another, they can communicate easily and, and quickly with their professors and with other countries is very important. And then insisting that your faculty stay uh, up to speed. We already have rigid re requirements for publication on part of faculty and, and that's not only to advance uh, global knowledge, it's also to make sure that the faculty are on the cutting edge of research and know the latest information in their field. Thank you. Our uh, next question comes from Ecuador. It's a fax question and I will read for you. Since you are a communicator, mm -hmm. do you think that the mass media professionals of today must become more knowledgeable of global dynamics and trends so that they can be an agent for learning and better understanding in the communities that they serve? Hmm. Uh, two responses. First of all, in the new media environment, uh, millions and millions of people are in uh, a sense broadcasters or uh, originators of content. My students have their own websites, they have their own blogs, they have their own face pages. Uh, uh, they uh, live in this virtual reality where they all can originate information. They send each other YouTube uh, clips and, and uh, it's a very, very different environment than when I was a, a young man and we had three television stations to choose from and that was it. Now if you're talking about traditional media, uh, traditional media professionals need to be much more than talking heads. They need to have a broad understanding of political science and sociology and business and technology uh, because they are imperative to the content of what they're talking about rather than just reading off a teleprompter. Thank you. Um, our uh, next question is uh, from Mexicali, Baja, California. Go ahead, please. Buenos dias. What would you recommend in order for leaders in government can really be current and adapt to change? Because a lot of people really don't think about other people in, in terms of, of government. So what can we do to change this? Well, in any democracy, the first thing is to have an educated electorate that insists on uh, electing leaders that have programs for uh, social change, whether it be for better medical care or better telecommunication infrastructure in their country or uh, new plans for economic revitalization or education. So in a sense, in any democratic country where public officials are elected, this is a responsibility of the people. Now, in terms of elected officials themselves, uh, they should think uh, first and foremost about the common good of the people they represent. And that means uh, providing them with access to and information about uh, the latest knowledge, uh, the latest technology, and the latest trends in a society. So this should be very high on the agenda of any uh, government official uh, rather than just the pragmatic day-to-day -day concerns of managing their position. Great, thank you. And our uh, next question is uh, from La Paz, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm... Bueno. 
Sí, adelante. Buenos días. Buenos días. Bueno, ¿no? ya están hablando. Por favor, con... Bueno, bueno, bueno. Bueno. Bueno, bueno. Bueno, sí. Uh, I'm going to make my question in English. Uh, as long as we all increase our knowledge and capacities to be more competitive, what can we do to reduce the gradual loss? The gradual loss of morality. Uh, say in the private or public behaviors. We see corruption as a growing problem that contributes too to the widening gap between the rich and poor too. So we, what can we do about that too? Yeah. Thanks. Well, first of all, it is imperative uh, that in our schools from high school up through the university that we teach uh, about ethics and morality and good decision making. Uh, so that's, that's for, I think, where we start. But I think then, as well, we have to uh, carefully uh, uh, analyze and try to change the, the global trend of uh, a bimodal society where uh, one group is very rich, uh, have very interesting global international jobs, have great access to uh, communication technology, and on the other side of that economic gap and that digital divide are people without access to the Internet, uh, without access to modern education, and that gap has to be changed. Uh, there's probably a lot of ways to do that. One is providing free Internet service and free information technology in libraries, community centers, uh, city halls, and public buildings. So that uh, access to the latest technology and information isn't a privilege of the rich, but a common birthright of all of your citizens. Uh, the second thing is uh, to provide uh, the latest education uh, and upgrade the, the schools, especially in the poorest neighborhoods, with the best teachers and provide incentives for the best teachers and professors to teach in that school so that those people can understand the importance of acquiring more knowledge and entering the information economy. But this is a problem worldwide. It is a problem here in the United States, and it's a problem all over the world, including all over Latin America and Mexico. Uh, I think our next question is also related to, to this uh, question, and this is facts to us uh, from CFE Mexico. Uh, learning from the younger generations is, great, uh, is a great idea in reference to technology, right. but what about learning about values from them? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I think we all have to learn about values from each other. Certainly the older generation uh, might uh, be a good source uh, for learning about and maintaining values. But those values always don't work perfectly for the younger generation. And it's not like the older generation, my generation certainly, has uh, always had the best values. And so I think this is a negotiation between the various generations. But in terms of trends uh, in technology, if I'm looking to learn a new dance, if I'm looking uh, to uh, get new statistical data, if I'm looking uh, to uh, understand how, how YouTube works, I certainly don't go to people my age or older than myself. I go to the youngest and best educated members of the culture. I think that ageism is a problem throughout the world, and we should turn to people that have great new ideas, be those ideas regarding ethics and morality, or be those uh, ideas uh, regarding um, uh, information and technology. Uh, thank you for your uh, excellent questions, but uh, we have run out of time. We hope that uh, you have enjoyed participating once again in this exciting multilingual and multinational program. For further references and study, you can consult your valuable ITC participants manual. Our next live video conference airing December 6, 2007 will be titled Markets and Productivity in the New Economy, the New Rules of Engagement and Service. For additional information on this video conference series, including the dates and specific topics 
For other upcoming programs, please contact ITC. We remind you that all ITC programs are created by and copyrighted by Miguel A. Cardenas and may not be taped, stored, reproduced, or retransmitted in any form, in whole or in part, without the written consent of the author. On behalf of all of us, I thank you for your ongoing participation and interest in this unique program. Thank you and see you soon.